The female reproductive cycles are two cycles going on at the same time. The ovaries have a series of actions going on to develop an egg and send it out for fertilization. The uterus also has a series of actions to prepare the endometrium for potential implantation of a fertilized egg. The ovary begins with developing the egg and surrounding follicular cells. This is the follicular phase and lasts for the first two weeks of the cycle usually. While a new egg is being developed in the ovary, the endometrium is sloughing off and being removed. This is the menstrual phase, which takes about three to seven days. After that, the endometrium rebuilds in the proliferative phase. So the first two weeks of a cycle has one phase with a lot of steps happening in the ovary, the follicular phase, and two phases happening in the uterus. This is the most variable phase within a cycle. Everything we will discuss is based on a 28-day cycle. However, women's cycles can increase or decrease due to the variability of the follicular phase, menstrual slash proliferative phase. Then ovulation happens and an egg is on the way down the uterine tube. This usually happens at the end of week two or day 14. In the ovary, the corpus luteum forms, secreting progesterone in a phase called the luteal phase. This lasts for exactly two weeks, unless the woman gets pregnant, more on that later. During the same two weeks, the uterus is in the secretatory phase where the endometrium secretes glycogen-rich nourishment for the potential implantation of a fertilized egg. The first two weeks in the ovary are taken up with follicular development from the primordial follicle to the mature graphian follicle ready to be ovulated. In this image, we can see all follicular stages that occur within the first two week cycle. This is a cat ovary, so many, many more follicles and ovum are being developed at a single time than would be seen in a human ovary. The ovarian cycle begins with primordial follicles in the perimeter being stimulated by follicle stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. Primordial follicles are identified as being surrounded by a layer of simple squamous epithelial cells. This ovum or oocyte inside is suspended in prophase 1. When the cells surrounding the follicle enlarge into cuboidal cells that may be several layers thick, it then becomes a primary follicle. The ovum itself also develops a shell that we see as a dark pink line called the zona pellucida. The follicle develops thecal cells which will secrete estrogen. The secondary follicle appears when fluid accumulates within the antrum inside the follicle. At the same time, cells accumulate around the oocyte outside of the zona pellucida. These cells are the corona radiata, which means radiating crown. Both the zona pellucida and corona radiata are ejected out of the ovary with the ovum during ovulation. These layers protect the ovum and are the two main barriers that sperm must go through in order to fertilize the egg. Mature follicles have a large fluid-filled antrum that will rupture and propel the ovum out of the ovary. The mature graphian follicle is made of layers of cells surrounding the ovum or egg Immediately around the ovum is the zona pellucida, followed by the corona radiata. These cells are ejected out of the ovary with the ovum during ovulation and form the first two barriers to sperm prior to fertilization. Granulosa cells hold the ovum within the follicle and produce the zona pellucida. Theca interna and theca externa are the layers that make up the follicle. Once the ovum has been ovulated, the granulosa cells and the theca interna enlarge to form the progesterone secreting corpus luteum. Ovum production or oogenesis begin before a woman's birth, accelerating at puberty and ends at menopause. Between puberty and menopause, oogenesis occurs on a monthly basis as part of the ovarian cycle. Unlike spermatogonia, the oogonia or stem cells of females complete their mitotic divisions before birth. They proceed as far as the prophase 1 of meiosis 1, but then the process comes to a halt. The primary oocytes remain in a state of suspended development until the individual reaches puberty, when rising levels of follicle-stimulating hormone trigger the start of the ovarian cycle. 
oogenesis produces one functional ovum which contains most of the original cytoplasm and smaller polar bodies, non-functional cells that later disintegrate. To correspond oogenesis to follicular development during the follicular phase in the first two weeks of the cycle from birth, the primordial cells are just waiting to be activated. Once they are, they develop into primary follicles then develop a fluid-filled antrum in the secondary follicle and mature follicular stages. Ovulation occurs and meiosis will not be completed unless that egg gets fertilized by a sperm. You can see the animation at the link shown. The release of estrogen and progesterone from the corpus luteum after an oocyte is released serves to stimulate the thickening of the uterine wall and development of the mammary glands in anticipation of pregnancy. If no pregnancy occurs within 14 days after the formation of the corpus luteum, then the corpus luteum will disintegrate. If pregnancy does occur, then the corpus luteum persists for about two to three months before it degenerates, as the placenta will take over the activity of progesterone secretion. Let's go through the ovary and uterine cycles week by week using a calendar. For each region, we'll look at an image to show what's going on and the hormone. Week one begins with the early follicular phase in the ovary, where a few primordial cells are developing into primary follicles and then secondary follicles as fluid begins to accumulate inside. In the uterus, the menstrual phase is happening with the breakdown of the endometrium. Although it seems as if the menstrual phase should be last, it is considered to be week one because a new set of eggs have begun to develop for the next cycle. Therefore, the weak sequence of the female cycle is dictated by the events in the ovary. During this time, both estrogen and progesterone levels are very low. Week two continues the follicular phase in the ovary as secondary follicles continue to enlarge and become mature graphene follicles at the end of this week. Once menstruation ends, the proliferative phase can begin to rebuild the endometrium. You can see the circle-like glands dotted throughout the enlarging endometrium. The dominant hormone that drives the growth of the endometrium is estrogen. At the end of week two, which is day 14, the egg is ejected out of the ovary. This does not represent a phase, but is a pivotal transition movement from the weeks one and two phases to the post-ovulatory phases of week three and four. Week three begins with the luteal phase by the formation of the corpus luteum in the ovary. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone, which targets the endometrium. The presence of progesterone causes the endometrium to enter the secretory phase by stimulating glandular secretions of glycogen-rich substances into spaces within the tissue. This would provide nourishment for an implanted embryo if an egg were to get fertilized. The corpus luteum provides progesterone for the glycogen secretions for only 14 days, unless a fertilized egg is implanted, which would allow the progesterone secretions to continue. Week four continues both the luteal phase in the ovary and the secretory phase in the endometrium. If a fertilized egg is not implanted, then the end of week four will begin the next cycle. Let's review their uterine phases. Week one has very low hormone levels during the menstrual phase. Week two has increasing estrogen levels where estrogen is the dominant hormone stimulating endometrial growth during the proliferative phase. Week three and four have progesterone as the dominant hormone causing the secretory phase. For the phases of the ovary, week one begins as the follicular phase as some primordial follicles become activated. Week two continues follicular development with the continuation of the follicular phase. Finally, at the end of week two, ovulation takes place where the egg is now on its way to the uterus. Week three is marked by the formation of the corpus luteum and the secretion of progesterone in the luteal phase, which continues through week four. If the woman gets pregnant and the fertilized egg implants in the endometrium in week three, then the corpus luteum is maintained and progesterone continues to be secreted for several weeks beyond week four until the placenta forms and the embryo no longer needs the glycogen secretions. 